Remember, Mar Marlo will, by default of seedings, have won the die roll for this matchup. And well, uh, they, they both have uh, hats that are uh, rival hats. As many people know, the, uh, the Bo Boston Red Sox are uh, rivals of the, uh, the Kentucky University Wild of Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes. <laughs> Wildcats. Yeah. Boston, as you call in the last year, went on a terrible run to miss the playoffs, whereas Kentucky were national champions. But then, fortunately, graduated their whole team. So this year, you know, it's anyone's game between the two of them. <laughs> Yes, uh, playing in different leagues, but <laughs> <laughs> rivals nonetheless. None, nonetheless, a bitter <laughs> rivalry. Yeah, well, both the players pretty pretty chatty here, which is nice to see. Um, a, a, a good amount, a fair amount on the line for them, but it's nice to see the players still kind of, you know, getting into it, mixing it up with each other a bit. Yeah, the the more is on the line, the more I tend to talk. I I agree. The more. <laughs> I love talking to people when you're like in the top eight of an event. Yeah, I think some people sometimes. Yeah, it's definitely to people. Some people react by getting more serious in serious situations, and some people kind of try to diffuse the seriousness to the situations. Um, I would be more in your camp. I talk to people a lot, especially when I'm in a big match. Yeah. I want them to know that I am their friend. But are you their friend for the match? I mean, if you're competing with them, you know, for thousands of dollars in magic, you know, me. You can be friends before the match. You can be friends after the match. During the match, during the match, they are a rival planeswalker whom you must defeat in battle. It's true. They are a rival planeswalker whom I must defeat in battle. And I mean, if I don't win, then I won't have enough money to, you know, fund my jetpack project. Right. So <laughs> <laughs> it's really important that I win. But if, if I talk enough and make them think I'm friendly enough, maybe I can make them my. Uh, you know, if they could uh, be one of my backers, they could help fund my jetpack project and make it have a cut of it once it's the most successful business in the world. So what's so the goal? What is the goal of the jetpack project? The Jake's jetpacks. I want uh, everybody in the world to have their own jetpack so they can travel from place to place. A very That's admirable it. goal. Yeah. So we need six billion jetpacks. More soon to be six billion jetpacks. All right. How many are we at right now? Um, right now we don't have any yet. Okay. So there are only six billion more that we have to do. Well, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. But the way I figure it is, you know, if everybody just makes one, then we'll have six billion of them. Yeah. <laughs> that seems perfectly reasonable. We already have we already have plans for how we're going to accomplish this. We already have six billion people. Everybody only has to build <laughs> one. one. <laughs> Gotta be, it's gotta be more than six billion people now. Yeah, actually, I think it's. I think we're already we're already half on. I think we're over halfway to seven million. Oh, we have to be further along than that, right? Because it's. Uh, are, are we over seven yet? Well, I don't think we are. What? Maybe wasn't it we like two thousand or two thousand? It was like nineteen ninety nine that it was six billion. Oh, maybe I'm just showing. Okay, maybe we are over seven. That's probably true. So I remember true. I had a, a college professor and... Well, it, you're, you're going to have to get more jetpacks now. Is the real implication of this. Is this that's true. To build more. That's true. And, you know, I didn't really take into account that the very young children would be unable to build their own jetpacks. Right, well, they, their, parents the will have to build, their parents will have to build jetpacks <laughs> for them. We have 6.8 billion. Okay, so we're not at... We've been informed. 6.8. Not actually at 7 yet. So, if you get your 7 8? billion jetpacks, you should be set for at Why least now? another year. That's crazy that we're only at 6.8. That seems like a very slim. Seven? Seven? Okay, oh, we are at seven. At seven billion. Okay, we just are, we're, we just are barely just over, se over seven? Er, <laughs> sorry. I don't know, okay. <laughs> we're conflicting yeah. reports over how, how many people yeah, we actually have. 200 million people were just born. Okay, so now <laughs> we move up. Players, we are extending the registration period for the draft over All right. to 9.30. So on to our game here. Make sure to come on up to the invitational stage and get yourself Both players still readying, readying their decks. So, so once again, draft compared to, let's, let's compare we'll Ross's deck of how it's going to play against Marlowe's deck. We'll compare it to what happened last time with Brad Shepard. As you remember, both these decks are somewhat similar, but Brad Shepard's deck we saw a lot of blade splicers out of, something we won't see with Ross. Presumably you would think that's a better matchup for Michael Marlowe, because blade splicer is such an excellent card against him, he didn't really seem to mind. Um, 
So, on the other hand, I, I do think I want you know. So I think on first glance, you'd think that Ross's matchup would be worse. He's playing guys to Saint Traft. Um, certainly not as good with Phantasmal. You know, equally weak he against Phantasmal have Image. He also doesn't have Feasting Famine. Um, it's definitely worse. Yeah. So. I would say the matchup is is a little worse. He has a lot. He has more can tripping, and I think he'll get to he gets to his business cards a little faster. Um, so he needs to be a little more. Ross needs to be more aggressive. Game one, I think game one he's definitely worse. Ross has access to a much stronger sideboard. So if he can win game one, I think he'll. I, I like his odds to win the whole match. Yeah, I mean Ross's sideboard is awesome and it's really well built. Uh, Michael's sideboard not the best against these Delver type strategies. No. Not a lot going on there. But, I mean, maybe his main deck is just really well positioned against them. Last round, he had to, he had to fight through multiple Blade Splicers. Right. Over well, and over. Well, and yeah. He was able to do it. Michael drew, I mean, Michael played to, like, the strength, the, the side of his deck, which is really his strongest side. It was Gravecrawlers, almost solely with Gravecrawlers, Phantasmal Images, and Garolf's Messengers. So it's that image, I think, that really... Yeah, I... <laughs> 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 Gross barium. <laughs> Finally on camera. Thank you very much. <laughs> Despite our best attempts to keep Ross of off of camera, he has now made it here in the final. I'm furious. <laughs> All I wanted was to keep him off camera. I know. It was my goal. And then he thwarted me and has now made his way onto camera. So now we will thoroughly scrutinize his plays in front of everyone who's watching at home. Yeah. Evil Delver player Ross Merriam. <laughs> <laughs> Ross the Boss Merriam. Ross the who? Or he could be Ross the Ross Merriam. Because Brian the Ross Boss didn't do well enough. There's so many yesterday. words that rhyme with Oss. Well, it has to, it's only Ross and Boss. Ross we and only boss. use Ross yes, and Boss. Yes, but you're just using them a bunch. I know, but that's the whole point. So, I mean, basically what happened in the Magic community is uh, there was a player uh, named Tom Ross. Right. Uh, Tom Ross, very strong player, uh, super cool guy, great deck builder. Uh, he did very well at Pro Tour San Diego, I believe. Uh, his he he designed the Naya deck, which Luis went 16-0 with in the standard of for Pro Tour San Diego. Wow. Yeah. So um, yeah, but Tom, the boss Ross, incredible player, and uh, since you know his time. We've had a lot of other players coming in who are trying to uh, trying to use his name to their advantage. So you have people like Ross the Boss, Merriam, or uh, Brian, like Brian, Boss. Brian Boss, who is... Brian the Ross Boss? Yeah, Brian the Ross Boss. All right. <laughs> so, our finals. Michael Marlowe, Blue Black Zombies, against Ross Merriam playing Blue White Delver. Yes. We are keeping... All right. So, so we're supposed to completely scrutinize how his hand there. Full of lands and ponders, and he's going to take a mulligan on it. Yeah, I mean... <laughs> I think his... Wasn't his only land a Glacial Fortress? Or yeah, it, was a, it, was a, it was a Glacial Fortress and some ponders. It was, you know, really, really a strong one there. Yeah, we don't even get the ponder on turn one. No, no. There's it's, it's, it's no not, wind and he's on And he's on the draw. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so so we will we will begrudgingly agree with his mulligan decision. Michael's pretty excited about the mulligan. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty awesome. The finals, standard open. We're gonna move on to an invitational. Right. So just a little bit. Invitational. What an insane tournament! This tournament has uh, the only tournament you can enter with better prizes than this. Yeah, and even at that, sometimes I'm not. I'm not sure if per player that's actually even true. Uh, invitational, yeah, one of the, one of the more select tournaments definitely to qualify for. Really good prize support on top of that. And we have a pretty great top eight. I'm excited about seeing if Max Teets can go back to back here. Right, especially yeah. With what we have two our previous two invitational winners already in this in this top eight with Max Teets and Jerry Thompson. All right, so Ross's hand a little closer. He's gonna keep it. Uh, all right, I believe we can actually, yeah. He's got Ponder, Mana Leak. 
So a turn one dire graph ghoul from Michael Marlowe. Right. Starting things off on an aggressive note. All right, so he's got the Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler is one of the scariest cards. Pre-board, you don't have access in this matchup to Celestial Purge. Gravecrawler is a card that you essentially have to race against, which can be very difficult for you, especially with Tragic Slip in his hand, the Guest's Verdict in his hand, and Marlowe's probably at a large advantage here. So the only card Ross gets yeah, to Marlo's play... Marlowe's got a pretty awesome hand. Yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's short a couple things. You know, it doesn't actually have a Garolf's Messenger in it. It really only has four power on the board. But with the removal he has to back it up, you have to think that he's, he's in a pretty good spot. And, okay, his second draw was Highborn Ghoul. So, good power on the board. Ross has a Sword of War and Peace. Uh, but because of Geth's Verdict and really the Tragic Slip, it's going to be hard for him to link it up and really turn it into a life gain card. Ross is going to ponder here. Kind of not really happy with the draws he's getting. Uh, this matchup game one is usually very solidly in Zombie's favor. Afterward, I think Ross is, Ross is the favorite, though. So we've Ross found a pair of Vapor Snags on top of his library, so... Which is good, but uh, Marlo's deck's ma converted mana cost is is pretty low. Uh, the Vapor Snags, the problem is it means that Ross won't be drawing lands if he keeps this. I think he has a Seachrome Co, so he, he's fine with that. It's gonna try. It's going to try to stall his way for a little bit with Vapor Snags. Yeah, Vapor Snags' strongest yeah. against... Uh, things that cost a little bit more mana. Well, it, it's actually probably best against Highborn Ghoul in Marlowe's deck. Uh, you know, the only other thing that costs more is Groff's Messenger, which isn't exactly exciting to Vapor Snag. But Marlowe's just going to continue to commit toward the board, recasting all his cards. And Delver of Secrets down for Ross. That's almost certainly going to take a tragic slip. Yeah, not not waiting on it. And he can man he will mana leak here, which that is it's pretty strong. And... Another tragic slip was drawn by Marlo. He'll hit Ross down to eight. Remember, Marlo also has another Geth's yep. Verdict in his hand. Uh, Ross really on a back foot. And yeah, he's, aw he's aware of the Geth's Verdict. I think we'll see them go players go to game two pretty quickly here. So, yeah, I don't really know yeah, what if Ross can even do. If you think about it in terms of, you know, serving, Ross, Ross really, Michael, Michael held serve in game one. It's our tennis analogy. Uh, zombies favorite in game one and this basically showing why ross wants to see the rest of his hand probably before and he has glacial fortress and another he'll look at his hand pro. sure and then he does a gut shot which isn't even castable because All right, he'll pass the turn to Marlo. Marlo's going to untap, hit him down to two. And, yeah, <laughs> Ross is going to go ahead and gut shot the Highborn Ghoul, which also Staying puts him two. to two. And or okay. he'll, stay, no, he'll stay at four. He'll snag the the Diagraph Ghoul. The big, Ross's last card is a sort of worn piece. Biggest issue is that he has no creature in play, and we know Michael Marlo is sitting on a Geth's Verdict. All right, two more one drops. Go ahead. And that's that should not be that'll too get shabby. Ross is going to need two blockers or a removal spell and a blocker, right. and he doesn't have it. Michael Marlowe takes game one. So we were talking about the fact, why is this matchup so much different post-board? Well, let's talk about some of the cards that Ross gets access to here. Got it. Okay. Uh, so, so we'll talk about some of the cards that he has access to here. He has access to Celestial Purge. Two once purge, two timely reinforcements, two phantasmal images, one batter skull, and then an extra sword of war and peace. Maybe not play, maybe the sword won't come in, but the rest of them, and even the mental well, one mental misstep on his board, he'll get about seven extra cards to work with here. So for those of you watching at home, we uh, are at the end of our standard open, and that means we have a trivia question with a prize of one free Gen Con badge. The first Pretty exciting! You'll get to come here to Indianapolis, here? Indiana. Yeah, Gen Con. Get to see a place where Jacob Van Lunen has been. Yeah, it's pretty exciting very, stuff. Yeah. All right. So, uh, what I would like to know, remember, tweet your answers to hashtag SCG Premium, is what Planeswalker did we preview on air on the Magic Show on Friday? We'd like the we'd like the full name, not just you know the subtype. So, for example, yeah. if the answer were Soren, you could have to say you Soren, you'd say Soren, Lord of Innistrad. So, we're looking for the entire name of the card. So we'd like to know what Planeswalker we previewed earlier this weekend. 
Yeah. So Gen Con, for those of you who don't know what it is, it's a game. It's a gaming convention that takes place in the middle of August. Um, here in Indianapolis, it's, it's four days. It's a Thursday through Sunday convention. I already have my badge here. As you know, Jacob and Luna has been in this convention center. For those of you wanting to visit, it's in, the, it's in Hall J. Yeah, yeah. so um, they'll, they'll probably build a statue. Right. Where we're It'll standing. be in the back corner of Hall J, where yeah. you, you'll be able to see the Jacob Van Lunen The Jacob Van Lunen statue. statue. All right. And uh, the, the statues in me, if you've, if you've ever seen them before, uh, they don't actually look like me. They are... Uh, There'll be a commemorative, pl- some sort of commemorative yeah, inscription sort of by commem- it. So you'll, commemorative you'll, you'll chair, know. Right. table. Um, you might see a strange mark on the floor because um, the floor melts under my feet. Wherever right. I go, so. All right, so on two you said Ross probably will turn. He he becomes more of a control deck really in this kind of matchup, uh, similar to what uh, we saw Brad Shepard do in the top in the top four. Uh, a lot of cards become very strong. Like I said, uh, cards like Celestial Purge and Timely Reinforcements really let him avoid what happened to Game One there. And he's going to hope to make his way to either a Geist of Saint Traft or a Batter Skull. And Batter Skull is so strong here. Yeah, Batter Skull. That's really what Ross great. wants more than right. anything is a Batter Skull. Yeah, the reason we haven't been talking about uh, Michael Mo- Michael Marlowe's sideboard is he doesn't really have much of a sideboard in this matchup. Yeah, it's uh, his sideboard is pretty interesting because he's he's got uh, he's got some angles, and I'm I'm going to be interested to ask him how he sideboards. If right, he's able he could to play Skurstock High Priest. He could play Nile Spellbomb. I think it, they might come in for a Killing Wave, but I'm not even positive. As I'm not. A Killing Wave is a very very high synergy card here. Yeah, I mean, it, the Killing Waves are pretty awesome. I think almost certainly the main deck Bloodline Keeper is not kept in here. It's really hard to keep a four mana sorcery speed guy. That doesn't in your do. Deck yeah, the, almost all your four Delver. mana cards against Delver need to have do something when they enter the battlefield. You need to play them yeah. almost as spells. Because if your opponent has a Vapor Sang and a Snap Crest Formation in their hand, and you cast a four mana creature that doesn't do anything when it enters the battlefield, you just lost. Right. You know, it's uh, it's just it's too bad. You can't do that. Again, uh, make sure you answer that trivia question. You uh, have an opportunity to win a free Gen Con badge. A free Gen Con badge. And at Gen Con, you can use that Planeswalker to battle other Planeswalkers. Yeah, there will be magic at Gen Con. I believe the Team World Cup is at Gen Con, if I'm not mistaken. Very exciting. Uh, me. Cheer on United States. We now have our full United States team. Joe Panaccio. Yeah, Joe. Taking the last slot. So the team is Joe Panaccio, Alex Bynek, uh, Luis Scott Vargas, and Brian Kibler will be the United States national team. So you get to you can watch that contest as well. And there are plenty of side events. Uh, Wizards of the Coast usually devotes an entire hall just to tra- just to, t- to trading card games. Probably with, probably Magic takes up over half the hall there. So it's like the size of a Grand Prix, except that's only one room of the convention. It's pretty it's, cool. It's really neat. So then I try to make it for every year. Now, uh, I think one of the coolest features of Indianapolis during Gen Con is the theaters and the movies they show. And if you notice that, you can uh, mm-hmm. usually see uh, Empire Strikes Back. And so they if had... you've never seen Empire Strikes Back in a movie theater before, you need to do that. Yeah, the downtown the themes itself. A lot of the the restaurants will sci-fi theme themselves. It was the first year I was there. Yeah, they have a there's a great classic movie theater, like great movie theater downtown across the street, and they showed. Uh, and they showed the Wrath of Khan on their uh, <laughs> as, as the, <laughs> was one of their movies. Like this is this is excellent. <laughs> so yeah, the, the town really transforms and um, really does Gen Con well. It's a it's a great weekend. Oh, uh, now uh, Jesse uh, suggests that the memorials they build for me wherever I go that they call them Vet Luminous Memorial. Memorial. Okay. Yeah, Cr- flying first strike. Flying first strike. Haste. Everything. Well, that would assume that you have all of those things. So your Chroma's Memorial, make, yeah. I would like you to look at the uh, a feature match from Pro Tour San Diego in 2007 in round six, where in a Chroma's Memorial made for a very hilarious feature match, especially the writing. The entire feature match is about how badly we're losing. 
about how we just don't stand up to have like we're, like we were dead and on then, board. And then you draw a Chromos Memorial. Well, we had a Chromos Memorial in play, but we didn't have any creatures. And then our opponents finally like attacked us with a whole bunch of stuff, right. almost killed us. So pretty good hand from Ross here. Oh, he has the purge and everything. It has the purge. Has yeah. a Geisa Saint Traft. It still has a gut shot in, which is a little, a little. I wasn't expecting still to see at this point. So right. fume spitters have come in for Michael Marlowe, but his hand is very weak actually. Um, it do it doesn't have a blue source for the two ponders in it. Um, I, it's 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 a very close hand of whether or not you'd even keep it. So Ross has got to be pretty happy with that. Uh, I, I don't think I like it much either. Ross needs to be aggressive here, and he really just doesn't. He really isn't. Another messenger for Michael here. He just so he drew another messenger. So what Michael can do is if he can get all these messengers online, if he can find time to do it, uh, he should be able. That'll represent his best chance. What he'll have to do is possibly just crack this Nile spell bomb yeah, next just can turn. Trip a little bit. Try to find some more pressure. All right, Ross with no plays yet. Uh, going the the biggest thing is if Michael if Michael hiccups at all, which he's not going. He's going to get his turn three Gross messengers. He's still going to have to race with Geist of Saint Traft, which remember Ross does have a Celestial Purge. So Fume Spitter comes down. That's not going to help too much. Ross will probably just slam a Geist of Saint Traft here. And almost no reason to hold back with it. Yeah. Uh, Michael's, Michael's not online for his blue mana, so you'd presume that the Phantasmal Image isn't a concern. Now, even if it were, Ross probably has no choice but to play the Geist into it. Geist of St. Trapped. It's so powerful. So powerful. It's not blocked, it's a 6-6 six, six for 3. With Hexproof. Yeah, um, you know, Blade Splicer may have been performing better in the very short term, but when you're playing in stacks like right. Wolfron. And it right looks like Michael Marlowe has drawn a Drowned Catacomb, I believe. Oh, that's pretty nice. Yeah, all right. So he's, he's going to start the Parade of Garolf's Messengers and hope that that will get him there. Uh, Ross does, we, as we know, have one Purge. So as long as, maybe if he's drawn a Snapcaster Mage, it can just really, it'll, it'll really just send home how good that card is, is against this deck. Moreland Haunt, so Ross is firing on all cylinders now. Yeah, he'll go ahead and just immediately Purge the Messenger. Doesn't want to see it get cloned or anything. That's pretty nice for him. All right, so and Michael Angel comes in quickly behind here. And he's gonna gut shot the fume spitter, so he does manage to find value off his gut shot. And he'll play Snapcaster Mage, targeting Jataxian Probe. Uh, a, a little hasty on the Snapcaster Mage, unless he has a second one. He needs to make yeah, the Nile Spell Bomb will get everything. Okay, so yeah, he wants to draw the Nile Bomb, so he's not actually going to get to snap cast the, the Celestial Purge. So we'll Ponder see from Michael? Sure. Michael's, the problem with it is now the, the next Gross Messenger that, that's in Michael's hand, not very good at racing here. Ross is threatening to swing for 8 and drop Michael to 6. Uh, a come into play tapped creature may not be enough. Yeah, just that first swing from Geist was, took a big enough chunk out of Michael's life total to just set him far back and well, yeah. now Ross can just lean on him and that's that's what Delver can do. Well if yeah he especially gets his first couple of punches in. Yeah if he gets Michael down to a life total around six then suddenly all these he can chip away with cards like vapor snags and snap casting vapor snags to really just like seal the last few points. Suiciding Geist even. Yeah suiciding Geist just to deal four. Michael will need to have an untapped blocker this turn really he wants to. He wants to apologize. <laughs> Ross says he is apologizing for playing very badly on camera. Well, we like how this game is going. I mean, he knew about the second draw messenger and had the purge in the graveyard. So if he has another snapcaster, yeah, he I didn't. He, he didn't know about the second messenger. I don't believe. Oh, he didn't. No, we only saw the first one off the off the taxing probe. Oh, you're right. So he doesn't uh, he know that the, there's another he one the second there. Second one on turn two. So. So Michael uh, just can shuffle his library with that ponder. All right, got to be a good sign from Ross there. I mean, you know, you especially when, when your opponent's on the back foot and they ponder and you Later. see them shuffle. There's always that like 
mental fist pump that you're doing. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's already up and he's trying to play land. Ross is reminding him, no, he's actually already got when they're behind this turn. They keep, That's, like, oh, oh, no. no. It's all right. He has no play other than the messenger. Um, it'll drop Ross to 14, but uh, I, I think what Marlo will want is something like a pair of blood artists would be pretty good. Some, he needs someone to get himself back in the game. He's dropped to six here. And Ross has, because Ross has Moorland Haunt on the battlefield, he's actually threatening five power worth of flyers. And then that's even scarier. Though to be fair, if he were to make that play, he may actually want to not do that play right now. He may want to end step, make a Moorland Haunt token, and then hope that he would untap and draw a fifth land. Seems reasonable. I mean, this, this all depends on the rest of his hand. Not looking very good for Michael right now. Well, I don't know how he's going to He might be going to a game us. three. Problem as well, Garolf's Messenger is great at eating life from people, from players. So is so is Geist of Saint Traft. Geist of Saint Traft, uh, arguably better at it. Easier. I would say better. Yeah. And yes, it has hexproof, but it's still easier to remove. <laughs> Man, so, such good three drops around nowadays. All right, so we do have a blood artist in play now from Marlo. Oh, a highborn. He's gonna go with highborn ghoul. He does have a blood artist in hand though. Yeah, so highborn ghoul, blood artist. Michael's trying just is mostly just trying to stabilize here. The scarier part is that Moorland Haunt can make flyers. Yeah, and uh, in the beginning next turn, Michael's going to have to come plan to beat that more land haunt. And is that, do we have, a, oh, and we do have the vapor snag. All right, that'll put Marlo at five. And remember the blood, and the snap cancer, yeah. <laughs> All right. That's kind of what we said, when you get into that dangerous territory of six life, the vapor snag just becomes a back-breakingly good card. Yeah, and that's the thing about Vapor Snag, especially when you're on the play with a Vapor Snag and you have early aggression and your opponent's stumbling a little bit. Once you're ahead with the Delver deck, uh, if your opponent is trying to get back onto the table and you already have a board presence, if you have a Vapor Snag in your hand, it's going to be extremely difficult to lose. You can Vapor Snag their, their first play, then you're still ahead on the board, you can further your board position. Then if you have a Snapcaster or another Vapor Snag, your opponent just loses on the spot. Right. That's one of the reasons why Delver's so good. So, going back to boarding, I'm a little surprised. So, uh, Ro it appears that Ross has probably taken out some number of mana leaks here. Um, and it looks like he's kept in his gut shots, which I was actually a little bit surprised to see. Um, the, but he did actually find the best target in the deck for the gut shot. Because Fume the Spitter. He went, uh, well, I guess he, he, he ended up gut shotting Fume Spitter, which oh, is pretty right. good. Um, especially, say, if Ross was on, like, he may keep it in on the draw. Uh, lots of times, for curve considerations, a Zombies player will play a Fume Spitter out on turn one, and you can gut shot it and then make a Delver of Secrets. That said, I still find, would probably try to find one of the other cards in here instead. He's got a good amount of stuff post board. Wait, he has, yeah, like we said, he has Celestial Purge, Timely Reinforcements, Phantasmal Image, Batter, and Batter Skull all decide in post board. I think rather than gut shot, I might rather play something like Mental Misstep if I wanted a Phyrexian mana answer. The Mental Misstep, uh, pretty good against Michael Marlowe's deck. I mean, obviously not Where, good against uh, Gravecrawler, but pretty good against the rest of them. Yeah, the, the whole reason that gut shot is so much better than Mental Misstep in standard and it sees so much more extensive play is because of one mana creatures that produce mana. Right. And when you're playing against a deck that doesn't have those, deck where it's I mean, only reasonable targets for gut shot are pretty much fume spitter yeah and to be fair you can misstep a birds of paradise but what's really neat is the ability to gut shot snap cast or gut shot last time you need really just to mow down people's teams sometimes even to kill a 2-2 with it yeah just the versatility of gut shot makes it i think clearly the better card i would definitely have to agree with I would definitely play a third gut shot before a first mental misstep. And I might play a, four, a first mental misstep before a fourth gut shot. Oh yeah, gut shots, the thing is when you have two gut shots in a hand is usually terrible because in the end you, you're paying a lot for a very... You're, you, in the, at the end of the day you're still playing a hornet sting. Yeah, I mean it's just one damage. Right. For a card. So... Really have to make it worth it. 
players uh, having a little bit of fun here this morning. All right, game three. This one's this one's for it all. Yeah, this is the game to win the whole thing. The mm -hmm. Star City Games Standard Open in Indianapolis, Indiana is about to come to a close, and either Ross Merriam or Michael Marlowe will be taking home a trophy today and a healthy check. Yeah. So this is a reminder to you, after after this match we'll have, uh, I believe, some interview, an interview with the players. We'll be taking a break and we'll be coming back at 11 o'clock for the Invitational Top 8. Now, star Start Invitational Top 8 for you. We have Shaheen Sarani, Ronnie Rittner, Max Teets, uh, Lauren Nolan, Adam Boyd, Jerry Thompson, Brian Bronduin, and Michael Hetrick. Yeah, so uh, the interview will be over at the sideboard with Ruben right. Bressler. Our other commentator. And watch out, we will also have a live broadcast of a newsening, I believe. One of Ruben Rez Buster's newsenings between this and the Invitational as well. Please find your pod. Very nice. At your table, there will be a slip with your seat assignment. Please take your seat. Or he will uh, the sure tell us the goings on of the weekend. Slide case. Once he again, was, uh, top of the Invitational. Your pod assignments have been hosted. Please find your table. Not looking like the, the best man, paper, but Michael, your maybe, I don't, take your seats. I can't see that. Oh, no, it's Dark Six, definitely awesome hand. <laughs> Dark Six Shores into Diagraph Ghoul, that's going to get, me. all right, and there's the mental misstep. And he, I see he also has the Celestial Persian hand, Ross has got to be pretty happy. This Delver of Secrets comes down for him. Uh, one of those high variance cards, see if he can get there with it. If it'll even get to live, first of all. And it does get to live, there's no mortar pot, he's got to, you know, thank there's no more of them. Okay, spoke too soon. It still eats one of the kill spells. <laughs> so it's a tragic slip that away. So Ross here, uh, depending on how he feels about answers to, yeah, what he'll likely do is represent a mana leak. And then if not, if there's no Garolf's Messenger that comes down this turn, he'll probably then purge the Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler actually can be a pretty big problem for his deck. Well, the ideal target is Guelph's Messenger, a Purge on a Gravecrawler is probably good enough. There you go, yep. And step he's going to Purge that now that he's seen no Messenger. You better put, make sort of War and Peace. And that's going to be really good, especially with the Angels. That and Ross just a Blood Artist for Michael Marlowe. It's got to be a great sign for Ross here. Yeah, Ross... Uh, in great position to win this match, especially if Michael doesn't have an instant Keep speed in star, but we'll kill killing Restoration Angel. Right, because we have Restoration Angel here, and Mike, Michael just says, go. Restoration Angel comes in on end step. I'm, I'm, I'm smelling a guess verdict or something coming in here, but possibly not. He's going to go for the equip and swing. Marlowe just takes it. He is taking eight damage. That puts Ross will gain three life. Um, he, there's two... Uh, two phantasmal images. <laughs> Ross shows that it's all three lands. Let's nice show your opponent your ponder. And you'd be like, yeah, no, 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 I'm shuffling. I'd like you to confirm it's correct that I'm shuffling here. See, this, this <laughs> There's <laughs> these no cards question suck. that I know what I'm doing. I know to shuffle away three lands when I already have four lands as a Delver player. See, what I would try to want to do in that situation if I were to show a ponder before that is I'd want to tilt my opponents. I'd want to just, I want to see something like Restoration Angel, Snapcaster, Mage, Geist, the same trap, then show it and be like, I'm shuffling. And the opponent looks at this area and be like, oh. <laughs> what is he want? What is he doing? <laughs> um, so you think, I'm going to lose anyway, and he's just shuffling away his best cards. So, uh, Michael Marlowe with his work cut out for him here. All right, well, he's going to be able to have a blocker for Restoration. The problem is, is if he images Restoration Angel, the images will become white and not able to block Restoration Angel. So he's going to go ahead and copy the angel, choosing not to blink his Blood Artist. He could have attacked and post-combat blinked it to untap it. But as an O1, right. not really the most profitable place. And down comes Garolf's Messenger. Keep in mind that uh, he's in a Vapor Snag. The Phantasm I'm surprised he did it in it. that order if he had a... Uh, uh, I hope they're not, they're not, shouldn't write a life total off that. That actually doesn't take a damage. Just ran in there, because of, uh, it dies before that happens. Yeah. Uh, well, I'm surprised that Michael, uh, Phantasmal Image, the Angel, before he casts the Drops Messenger. Sure. I, my my guess point. is that Michael misses that he, I think he, he thought it could block there. And down comes the Batter Skull for Ross. 
uh, Ross in firm Ooh. control of this game with all the life gain he has online. So we have Michael Marlowe down to six, li six life, I believe. Uh, facing a lethal swing, he has to either empty, he has to empty his hand for this restoration, not Angel, not to be a lethal swing. He's gonna cast Nile Spellbomb. He's gonna get Ross Miriam's graveyard. He's desperately digging for something to get him back in this game. He has another swamp. He's going to have to empty his hand. Yeah, but even if he does so, that only buys him a turn. Underneath the batter skull. So it looks like, despite the, our diverse top eight, the single Delver player able to manage, manage Delver able to <laughs> manage its way through a field of not Delver. Made it onto camera despite our wishes. Despite our wishes and best intentions, Ross Miriam made it onto camera. It looks like he's going to take this down. Michael Marlowe plays a swamp. His last card is Phantasmal Image. Phantasmal image can't really block much. All right, and there's the concession, and that's that sh it. that is the match. Ross Miriam is your Star City Games Indianapolis Standard Open champion. Yeah, the <laughs> <Yeah, laughs> you the did.